So today we're going to be going over the major fundamentals that you need to know in this game. I have the basic fundamentals, awareness fundamentals, and engagement fundamentals. Uh, so these are all the listed ones right here. I'm going to show examples for each one, pretty much uh, what they mean. And I'm going to make it super easy for you guys to understand uh, them so you can apply it to your own game. And if you need to save this video or maybe send it to somebody who's uh, not the best at Warzone, you want to get them to the top tier level, uh, this could really help them out right here, right? So I'm going to really help you guys understand this. So the first thing I'm going to talk about right here is centering, all right? Centering. Pretty much what that is, is looking at an enemy before you see them, kind of centering your die onto the person. So as soon as the smallest, you know, inch sees them, you're able to shoot. You don't want to hop out here and then aim like that. You want to hop over here and aim like that. And also, this is something that not a lot of people realize, is that as I'm going through places, I'm centering before I even see a person. So if I don't know if anybody's there, I'm centering before I see the person. So right here, I'm going to play it back. You can see as I'm approaching it, I'm keeping my dot at like the chest level to where people are. I'm not looking anywhere else but the chest level um, until the next location of where I think they're going to be. And here, as I slide, you can see I'm keeping it in the direction. Or I'm keeping it in the direction of where they are. Um, and then boom, as soon as I see him, my crosshair is able to tag him immediately because I was looking in the direction of where he's most likely to be and I was getting a lot of headshots right there and then I had to shoot the other guy because he was right there and then I guess kept aiming because I thought he was going to re-peek for his teammate and then boom I was able to get that other headshot because he was really low health so the whole point of centering is just making sure that your dot is in the general area of where the person is and then bam with centering a lot of people ask me like tips on how to get good recoil control and things like that um when I'm centering onto a person the recoil isn't that much of an issue and like the aim assist and stuff as long as I center onto the middle of the chest, right? Because if I have bad recoil, look at this recoil. You see how bad that recoil is? If I'm centered onto the chest, let's just say this guy, it's super easy to control. That wasn't really fair. Let me put the replace, right? Let me center onto him again. It's really easy for me to control the recoil. Let me center onto this guy pull it down a little bit and i'm able to have really good recoil recoil control all i'm doing is holding holding down like this a little bit and this is the recoil see how it has crazy recoil but if i set it onto him i'm able to get that really clean uh recoil control because the aim assist helps a lot with that so as long as you center into the middle of the chest first with the dot aim in boom you should have really good recoil control that way. A lot of people, they like to ADS first and then aim in. Most of the time, that's not going to do you good. You want to aim with the dot first, aim in, boom. You could also practice this with a sniper or a pistol. Just dot, aim, boom. Dot, aim, boom. All right, so this is one of the ways that you guys can center just like that. All right, that's one of the things that can help your centering in the firing range. The next thing I want to talk about is retreating. I never really talked about this too many times, um, but this is something that I see myself doing a lot and gets me out of a lot of situations. Every single time you're about to die or you know you need to run away and not challenge the fight, you want to make sure that you're swapping weapons to the gun that you have the fastest movement speed with and then running away like that. So if I challenge this guy and he's about to kill me, I swap turn slide all right so well, I'll, I'll do it over here so boom just like that this is very underrated nobody talks about this right but like oh he's shooting at me swap slide swap slide ready swap slide just like that Fight it loud. Another thing I forgot to mention too is here I swap and slide with the sniper. So boom, shoot right here, and then swap slide. Sometimes when you swap weapons, in the middle of your swapping, 
you actually have the faster movement speed because you're not holding any weapon while you're changing weapons. So that's why it was way better for me to swap and slide even though I had a sniper instead of just uh, sliding away and then doing it with an AR. So doing it again, I'm swap sliding, then I can peek again, and then I'm able to get that kill. And then I actually had a crazy uh, quick scope at the end too, so that was kind of sick. And uh, that is one of my go-to retreats to get away from situations. Because if I can swap and then slide, that helps me get out of uh, places faster. And anytime you want to retreat, you want to make sure that you are um, cutting off the angle, the line of sight from a lot of people uh, the best way that you can possible. So line of sight, this is actually extremely important that I forgot to mention uh, a little bit. So I'm going to kill this guy right here, right? And then soon I see his teammate on the map, right? One of his teammates is up here. So let's assume his teammate's going to chase me and I want to retreat. I'm going to keep in the back of my mind um, how long it takes for him to get to me. And I'm going to cut off the line of sight. So I want to make sure that I have enough obstacles in my way so that he can't see me. So if I go straight over here, I'm like, okay, there's too many obstacles to where he can't see me. And if he starts shooting, I can get away really fast. Boom, and then this is the line of sight that he can see me from. So let's just say he comes through here and he shoots at me. I can cut off his line of sight by going to the left here. And I could cut it off by going inside here, but then I'm going to get stuck with that ladder. So I don't really want to do that. All right, and that's uh, me keeping it in the back of my mind, just like making sure I'm cutting off his line of sight. And then his line of sight might be focused on that door so I can rotate to this door and kill him around there. All right, right now I'm going to talk about snaking. Um, snaking, a lot of people, they're like very confused on how to do this too. It's very simple and I haven't made a video about it in the past. All you do is drop shot backward. So hold back on the left stick while drop shotting backward. And then you sprint upwards. So I drop shot backward and then move up and sprint. Drop shot backward, move up and sprint. Drop shot backward, move up and sprint. And you just do this multiple times. Alright, so this is how you snake. But I need to tell you the benefits of snaking and why you should do it. So let's just say this guy all the way over here, he's aiming at me, right? And he wants to kill me. If I stand here and shoot at him, his aim assist is going to pick up a lot on my body. But if I snake like this, then his aim assist gets erased and it has to regather, recalibrate onto my body again. So let's just say I'm shooting this guy and he's about to kill me. He's getting more shots than I'm putting into him. I would shoot and then snake and then shoot again because what that does is it would reset his aim assist and I'd still be in the exact same position. He's going to start missing a lot of shots because I go back like this, shoot, go back like this, shoot. And uh, that is one of the main benefits. It throws off their aim assist and puts you right into the head glitch back right there. Or you can snake a little bit to the left and then snake to the right and you're unpredictable that way. So right here, I'm going to be snaking. Um, as I said before, I want to do it to knock off his aim. So I'm in the same exact spot. And I know that there's like a desk and computers to knock off his aim assist. So me getting to the ground like this and popping up super fast. Uh, he's going to be looking at me and shooting. But I'm able to hit more shots than he can. Because he's out in an open position for me to gather aim assist. And I am behind desks. So that's why he can't get a shot off me. And I can get shots off easily. I'm going to show it one more time. Uh, a little bit back so boom getting shot pop up and his aim is going crazy so that's how i snake i do it around walls too i made it uh, a short a tiktok about that so snaking around walls again it's gonna knock off their aim assist and you can see people this way so it's a drop shot backwards sprint upward drop shot backwards sprint upward Next, I'm going to talk about drop shotting. So this is very simple. I have my drop shot on my uh, right stick because I play tactical. Um, you know, you just drop shot when you're getting shot at. Drop shot. Boom. Um, but not only should you, you know, know how to drop shot correctly and get good aim with that. Um, but you got to know when to drop shot with guns and what i always say too is when you are drop shotting you want to make sure you're mainly doing it with assault rifles you can get away with doing it with smgs or just smaller weapons um, but usually the smaller weapons they get the most benefit from jumping around so if i'm aiming at this guy right and he's going to kill me i would jump around like this 
and shoot at him. This is a lot better for getting movement and dodging bullets. But if I have a bigger weapon, I can't jump as far. The straight speed's not as good. So what I want to do is drop shot. Because I'm getting more movement while aiming at him at the same time. Alright, so that's the main way you want to use the drop shot. Or let's just say I'm getting shot in the back, turn around drop shot. Alright, so what you want to have in the back of your mind for when to drop shot is, okay, I have an assault rifle, I need to be ready to drop shot. Oh, I'm getting shot in the back, I need to be ready to drop shot. Those are like the two main ways uh, you should activate your drop shots to be really good at this game. You can also drop shot with SMGs or any gun when you don't have a lot of movement available. So right here, I'm going to kill this guy, right? And the next guy, I'm going to drop shot. So right here, I jump up and drop shot right here. And now I'm going to play it back real quick. Um, so as soon as I kill this guy, I drop shot because I can't move. So I'm going to pause it. I jump out and now I can't move. I can slide to the left. I can jump, but he's more likely to kill me if I do that because I'm still in a stationary position. I don't got much options. So I'm going to continue shooting at him and then drop shot. So he misses his shots up top and then I only lose one plate of the shield I have and I'm able to kill him like that. This next one is speed changing. All right, and you guys, I've never talked about speed changing before, but I do it a lot. So uh, this is really good for breaking cameras or if you need to dodge a lot of bullets, if you're low on health or anything like that. Um, and it's pretty much, you got to change the speed at which you're getting shot at. So if I'm getting shot, I don't want to run full speed in one direction. Even if I'm sliding and jumping in one direction, he's going to match the pattern of my movement. And I'm going to die. So when you speed change, you want to change your speed. In the middle of the gunfight so if i'm sliding over here then i go back over here and i slide this way what i'm doing is i'm not just doing random slides and movements around like this to be you know flashy or anything like that what i'm doing is i'm running then i'm stopping then i'm running then i'm stopping and being that i'm switching constantly it makes me more unpredictable there's times where if i'm running across the field i would you know do a bunch of movement in a single direction and then i'd move backwards out in the open when I do that, it's because I want him to miss a lot of shots. And he knows that I'm going to want to get in cover as fast as possible. So if I just back away and not go straight for the cover, I can make him miss shots that way. So like I explained, speed changing is just changing your speed to make you unpredictable. So right here, this guy's going to chase me, right? I'm going in here, and as I'm going in here, I'm stopping. Because when I'm stopping, he's probably going to think that I'm continuing to go in here. So I can stop, reach out, even though my laser's in the way. My laser kind of gave my position away. Um, but if I didn't have a laser, it would be a lot more believable. This guy probably just wasn't like a super skilled player. Killed him right there. Go back. And then reach out immediately because he thinks I'm running away. But instead of standing in the same spot, I'm boosting forward. And I thought he was going to peek, but he didn't. He just went up. So uh, I, I guess he didn't want to challenge that fight. And then over here, I speed changed in a different way. So as soon as I picked up this SMG, I immediately stopped behind here and then jumped out. Because he thinks that I'm going to continue running that way. So me stopping and then jumping... Um, it changes my speed a lot because I'm not running in this direction yet, so he can't hear my footsteps here. And I try to time my footsteps with the bashing of the door. So my footsteps are silent, and I'm on a completely different side than what he is. Alright, so, boom. And he has no idea I'm there. Alright, and then I just assumed there was another guy here, so boom, got the kill right there. You can ramp up your speed by sliding or by jumping, so if I'm just running and I want to jump, or slide uh, those help me change my speed a lot of different times um, and I wouldn't really drop shot at all when speed changing that much because it really doesn't do anything but stops you in place so that you can get shot uh, so that's when you speed change you want to make sure you do it with slide or jump just like that and then of course attack sprint next I want to go over peekers advantage all right because some people don't know the fundamental of peekers advantage uh, what this really 
means is if I hop across a wall like this, I'm going to have a small window where I can see this guy before he can see me. All right. And that's very important because if he's standing there and I'm standing here, if I peek first, I can kill him before he kills me. All right. So uh, there's a few ways to do peekers advantage. You can just peek regularly while you're standing. So peeking like this. And most people think that you're moving like a bot when you do when you move like that. There's nothing wrong with this at all. I drop, you know, when I'm dropping 40 kill games, there's so many times when I just peek out like this. It's the most basic, simple thing you can do. You have really good aim. All right, you're centered right. You're standing up, so he can't hit your head as easily as if you were drop shotting. And this is just a simple peek. You move to the right or move to the left and aim. The crazy thing about this clip is I didn't even know he was there. I had like a somewhat guess like, oh, he might be in there. And even though like I wasn't super prepared when I went here, I still was able to kill him very fast, even though my whole body's exposed because he didn't see me on his screen in time. All right. So I was still at a somewhat disadvantage of not knowing he was there or not knowing his exact location. But being that I had Peeker's advantage, it still gave me the time to be able to kill him. And one of the things nobody really gets right to, uh, this is almost any video game you play, right? Your gun, look at my character, is on my right side. So with Peeker's advantage, if I'm peeking to the right, I'm going to have a faster time to kill him than if I was peeking to the left. Because look, as I'm peeking to the left, my body is showing more as I aim. But if I peek to the right, my gun is showing more before my body. So if you peek, if let's just say it's a 1v1, right? You're 1v1ing somebody. Um, and there's two options. You can either go left or right. Every single time, you want to go to the right. Because if you go to the right, and he's on the opposite side, and he's going to the left, you're going to see his body before he sees yours. All right, so peeking to the right, boom, is going to get you more kills that way. Then peeking to the left. That's something nobody really talks about. There's also the jump peeking. So you can just jump and peek like this. What a lot of movement players do. Uh, this doesn't really like help with your centering as much if you do a standing peek. But it does give you more space to not be able to get shot. So that's the advantage of jump peeking. And then drop shot peeking. Uh, this is the most dangerous if he knows what you're going to do. Because you can get shot in the head easily. Um... But usually this is good for fighting multiple people at once because you could drop shot peek, shoot, run away, back out real quick. Um, or if he thinks you're going to jump, if he sees you're doing a lot of movement and you drop shot peek like that, uh, it just really catches him off guard and you can get peeker's advantage while being in a super small spot and get a lot of kills that way. Next, I'm going to be talking about high ground, which is one of the most fundamental things for positioning. So high ground is extremely important, um, mainly because... When you are above an opponent, let, let's just say there's a guy right there, right? Boom, there's a guy right there. I'm going to see the top of his head a lot easier. It's going to be more wider than if he was down there and aiming at the top of mine. So first off, you get more visible headshots, so it's easier to hit headshots. And on top of that, if I'm down here, I have to drag my aim all the way up while the person up here, let me get up here real quick. The person up here, all they have to do is look down. Boom, right there. That's why a high ground is super important. Because it takes more time for you to look up. And when you have high ground, it takes less time for you to look down. And it gives you easier access to get headshots when you are from a high place. That's why you can hit all the shots in the world, but you still die from people in high ground. Because they get headshots and they can aim their gun at you faster. Two things, alright? High ground is very important. Now, with high ground just comes positioning, and there's a few things you want to keep in mind when it comes to positioning. One is high ground. Make sure you have high ground. Two is head glitches. I was going to say cover, um, but mainly it is the head glitches because if I'm right here, wait, because like if I'm right here, right, I could have some cover if I get down and stuff, but I don't have a head glitch. I don't have enough cover. And when you have a head glitch, like this thing right here, where it covers your head and that's it, that is the cover that you need. All right, Anything under a head glitch is not cover, unless you're proning, but if you get up, you're going to get shot. It's going to be an equal battle. So if you are in a head glitch, you're going to get the advantage 
over your opponent because they lose the aim assist and you're covering most of your body. And also with positioning, you also want to make sure that you have spots that you're able to go from cover to cover easily. All right, so let's just say um, I know there's a bunch of enemies right there. I can have good positioning right here because if I don't see anybody and I want to move, I can slide right here. Well, oh, that was a bad slide. I can slide right here like this. Boom. Good cover right here. I'm in a really good head glitch right here because it's barely covering. Like, you can only see my head from here, the top part, and that's it. And then I can position right here. All right, getting better positioning right here. So right here, I'm going to break this clip down. So I want to move to the nearest possible cover um, as fast as I can. Oh, let me, let me move this. So right here, I want to move like over there because there's cover right here and cover right there. So I'm moving from cover to cover, not just going out in the open. And that's what I'm doing right here. And then I see a guy on my left over there, right? So I'm trying to get into this head glitch. So in case he shoots at me, I'm able to lose his aim assist right there. So I kind of get in there. And then this guy actually pops in front of me. So I go kill him first. Boom, he's dead. And then I realize there's two right there, so they're probably going to kill me if I stay there. So I reposition, going, using my cover again. Yep, they're going to kill me. And this guy, like, randomly um, just shoots at me, so I retreat real quick. I wasn't expecting him there. And then reach out. He's not, he's not going anywhere. And as I'm healing, I notice that somebody else is in the building. I hear footsteps, right? So I'm using... Uh, you know, I'm kind of like playing a game with he with him here. Like, where is he going to go? And I'm going to go the opposite way until I heal, which I healed. And then I'm going to keep going to the left until he decides to reach out. Because if he jumps in the opposite direction, he now is losing his sprints of fire time. Yep, which he does right here. And he actually had a knife ready to throw at me. He missed it and easy kill right there. So that's how I was moving with the purpose, just like going around everywhere. Pretty much rotating over and over from each position to each head glitch, that is good positioning. And my thought process too, right, when I am positioning and getting head glitches, um, like I was saying, is just cover to cover. So if I'm shooting somebody, I'm snaking this, right? Snaking, shoot right here. I want to get in a better position. I can slide right here. All right. Better position. I can go right here. Nobody's over there. And you can see right here, I am not going to go to that tank. That is the worst spot for positioning because I can run out and get killed. So what I want to do is slide over here. I can get up here. But if not, if I want to keep moving, slide over here. Slide to this cover. Slide to that cover. All right, I'm going to do that one more time for you guys so you guys can see what I did. All right, so starting from... Just starting from right here, this is my movement pattern. Boom. I'm gonna get over here. Nobody's over there. Slide over here. Nobody's over here. I'm gonna slide over here. All right, and that is more coordinated uh, movement to where you're actually moving with the purpose. And I'm moving from position to position. I'm moving from head glitch to head glitch to over there. I'm in cover right there. So immediately sliding over here so I'm in cover again. And then I'm sliding back into cover for another head glitch. Alright, so you're going from good position to good position to good position to good position. You're not just running out in the open trying to make it to the next spot. You want to go from a certain position to the next position. That's how you not die most of the time. And a lot of people get this wrong. And that leads me to the next thing that I'm going to talk about, which is your tightness of corners. All right, so tightness of corners, um, what I like to call it is pretty much being tight around a corner. That's, that's, that's what it's called, tightness of corners. And this is important because if I'm peeking, right, if I just peek out like this, I'm going to get shot. So if, I'm, if I keep it tight, boom, shoot somebody right here, pop out, aim. So it's like really good for uh, aiming at people. And also tightness of corners, I apply to movement. All right, so um, let's just say I'm going around here, right? Let me open these doors real quick. I'm taking that exact, 
I'm taking that exact route, right? So if I'm taking that route, when I go around here, I'm going as tight as I can around this corner. So tight, tight, tight. All right, you don't want to have it open like this. So sliding open. This is bad. You don't want to be like that. You want to be tight. So I'm going to do it again the right way. Tight, tight, tight. You see how much faster that was? Because I'm going tight around the corner instead of going open. When you get open, you get shot. Because you are <laughs> too much out in the open. Or you get lower movement speed. Because you're not going as tight as you can around the corners. Alright, so this is me going as tight as I can. And then this is me going open. Alright, so that's tightness of corners. Next, we're going to talk about... Um, kind of like the, the mindset things that, or the mindset fundamentals that I have in this game. Um, and the first one that I really tell a lot of people about is mental prediction, is what I call it, right? Mental prediction. Mental prediction is putting yourself in your opponent's shoes and saying, if I was an enemy, what would I be doing right now? So let's just say an enemy is coming from that direction. My whole process is if I'm an enemy, I would either peek from the right there or I would peek from right there. All right. And being that I don't know the exact spot, I would kind of snake this or go back like this and have my hip fire ready. Because if he comes from there, I can aim, shoot. But if he comes from over there and I'm not aimed at him, I can crouch down, crouch up, and I'm centered onto his body right there. And we could also apply this to, I don't know, uh, if there's a lot of people, like a lot of my teammates right there, and I didn't see an enemy yet, I could be like, okay, well, if I was an enemy, what I would do is wrap around the map and come around over there. So maybe I could drop shot, peek like this, so when he comes around, I can shoot him just like that and kill him right there. Alright? So mental prediction is just the mindset of, if I was an enemy right now, what would I be doing? And... That is how you get a lot of kills. That's how <laughs> that's how you really predict where the enemy is. So I'm going to use this clip right here to kind of explain the mental prediction. So right here, I see there's a mosquito drone, right? Um, at the top right here. So I know enemies are there. And because I know that, I also know that they like to jump through this window a lot. I like to jump through there a lot, right? So I'm going to assume that he's coming through there. So I'm kind of like going to center there um, a little bit. But I'm also going to keep my options open in case he comes through that window or the stairs. And boom, he comes through the window, so easy shot right there. And I know his teammates are most likely going to be under because they would have followed him or jumped through there. So I kind of want to one-shot him with this thermite being that I'm low on ammo. And he doesn't come. So I'm like, okay, well, let me just finish him before he self reses And because he was like self resing too, right, I was kind of keeping like a mental note in my head. Like, what? when is he going to get up from the self res? So as I'm holding the thermite, I'm like counting in my head. Like, I'm like, one, two, three, four, five. And I'm like, okay, if he had self res, he'd probably be up by now. Boom, he has self-res, he's up, bam. So I'm like predicting his movement and um, where he's going to go. And at the same time too, I know his friend's going to res. Uh, so I send uh, a thing right here, the deployable decoy. And then what I do is I get in this corner. So he's going to tell his friend, hey, he's up top on this side. His friend's going to look, probably going to come up the stairs of the window, shoot at the person, I'm going to shoot at them. So that's kind of like the mental prediction I have right here. Now this could apply to like anything in Warzone. So let's just say the circle's closing, right? I do this a lot of times. The circle's closing, I'm like, all right, if I'm an enemy, what spot would I be to actually be in a good position so I don't die from the gas in the circle? And who would I be fighting? And that helps me, you know, know where players are and I'm able to get a lot of kills that way.
So right now I'm going to break down this clip. I actually dropped like a 24 kill solo quads here. Um, but at the circle is closing, right? There's no more resurgence. So if I die, it's game over. And I know that there's people most likely on this building, um, people in the building above me, and people on the bottom on the right. There's so many teams here because there's five teams left, right? So what I'm going to do is kind of hold this spot. So I can't go all the way up. I can't go all the way down. And if I it rotate too early, I'm going to die. All right. And uh, I wait for them to jump off. So that's how I'm able to get those two easy kills here. Right. So he jumped off. I'm not going to finish him because he most likely has another teammate. He jumps off. And then as soon as, as soon as I kill them, I know in my head if I jump down, the guy who's shooting above me is going to shoot me. And also any other team is going to third party. So even though I down them, I wait because I know what the enemy is going to do. And then he actually reses, but I can't do anything from this position. And I actually I actually rotate in the gas because if people are under here, they're not going to expect me to come from the gas. They're going to expect me to come from the same spot. So I rotate over here. Turns out nobody's here, but there's mine. So that means I have to rotate backwards, which I do. And then I don't fight. I actually go to the left here, even though like I might get shot from the other team. That's the best possible thing for me to do because they're all down there. So I go all the way up here, I have my high ground advantage, and then I see that one of them is downed, so I jump down, and then I don't finish this guy because I have an assault rifle, um, even though he's low health, I'm low health, so the best thing for me to do is to retreat. Yep, so I get away, I eventually do kill the whole team, so like, uh, where is it, yep. So after a while, I go back, and I'm like, okay, he's probably going to res by now because they don't have self res, so I'm going to go back. And he's rezzing, and then that was the easy kill right there. Now, this next part is extremely important, right? This is the number one way that you kill really good players. And it all comes down to baiting, all right? Baiting at the end of the day. And baiting is pretty much tricking your opponent, playing like mind games, to make sure that you catch them off guard and they can't kill you. There's a few types of baiting. There is audio baiting and visual baiting. I am going to start with the visual baiting because I think that is a lot easier to understand. Um, so visual baiting, you see so many good players do this a lot. What they do is they shoot, run away, reach out. All right. So they shoot, run away, re-challenge. And it's so simple. It's so easy to do. It is very predictable. But the reason they do it is because they want it to be unpredictable. If you get me one shot, if I'm about to die and I run away... The smart thing to do would be to keep running away, right? Because you don't want to get shot. So what they do is they're like, okay, my enemy is thinking that I'm going to run away. So I'm going to re-challenge them because they think I'm going to run away. That's a form of baiting. So when you see enemies, they just slide in, slide back out. That is a bait. This could also be if you see somebody. So like if I see somebody over here, I could like get up shoot at him and then run in this direction so he got shot from there and he thinks i'm still gonna be there now i'm up here i can shoot at him from right there and then when i shoot at him from right there then i can bait over here bait back and then jump over here like that so it's like switching it up multiple times to kind of get your opponent to make a wrong guess as to where you are that's kind of like the whole visual baiting um and they do that by visually seeing you by visually seeing your body move left and right Audio baiting is doing it just by audios, all right? And this is where, um, let's just say I know an enemy is like over here, right? If I was going to audio bait him, uh, I could do something like this. So I can like, if I hear him, I could run this way and slide back. And what I'm doing is I'm audio baiting him because I'm running this way and he hears my footsteps. And when he hears my footsteps and I immediately jump backward like this, now he thinks I'm right around the corner and I can shoot like that. And another thing too, sometimes I jump because if I'm running, it makes noise. All right, it makes noise. But if I jump, it doesn't make noise. So I could do something like this where I run, jump. So he he could kind of hear the jump at the end of it if he has really good hearing, but most of the time they don't. So he's going to hear the running. He's going to turn the corner. He doesn't know I jumped here and then I can shoot at him. Boom, it's like that. That's a that's an audio beat right there. The guy peeks out in that moment. Like he just kills him, bro. <laughs> it's like uh, three kids. Like... 
So right here I'm audio beating because when you go upstairs it actually makes a lot of noise. So right here I'm going to go all the way up the stairs so he knows that I completed going up the stairs. And I'm healing at the same time so we could probably hear that. And as soon as he comes down and starts running then I can immediately go back down because he thinks that I'm still up the stairs. It's not a visual bait because he's not seeing me go up the stairs he just knows I did. On top of using you know just predicting where I'm going to be and hearing my footsteps he thinks I'm up here. And then I immediately go back down, and boom, he's not even ready. And that's how I audio bait him right there. Another audio bait is with a door. And I do this a lot when I don't know where people are. So let's just say uh, I want them to know I'm at the door. If I go like this and run back, he now thinks that I went inside the building when I didn't go inside the building. So if I'm audio baiting him, I'm going to bust open this door, wrap around here, and now I can get shots from all the way over here. While he thinks I'm at the door because I audio baited him that way. You can also audio bait by shooting. So uh, let's just say, where's a good spot, right? I don't know. If I wanted to be at that head glitch over there, I can shoot like this. Just shoot, go back to the head glitch. And now he's going to start looking at that spot from where I shot from. And I can see if he's going around here, over there, over there with this head glitch because he saw on the mini map that I shot from that car. Right? So that's another form of audio baiting but it's really good for killing a lot of high uh highly skilled players because you got to be different than the average person the average person is probably just going to run up shoot people and do the basic stuff and if you're doing things that are not normal then he can't predict that as easily as a normal person right so that's just baiting in general so yeah that was pretty much my whole guide my whole starter guide um for warzone and modern warfare 3 um, and I am going to be streaming more on Twitch. So my Twitch is the underscore fifth underscore seal right here. And I might rotate between Twitch and Kick too. Kick is just five seal. And you can get connected with me or the community in my Discord in case you want to get the full guide um, for Warzone 3. Or if you want to get any coaching services for that.